I think that the great majority of you don't need an introduction on how the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe works. You have your deck with certain rules, you fight against others using ancient Egyptian monsters and that's it. But I feel deeply intrigued today to show you how this game adapted that concept in a simple but memorable way. Let's see what made Attack Force for so many people, including me, the best Yu-Gi-Oh! game. This video needed to arrive sooner or later, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like to support the channel guys. Without anything else to comment, let's begin. Yu-Gi-Oh! Attack Force works like a very basic traditional 2000s RPG, set in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX universe, more specifically in the Duel Academy. We take the skin of an exchange student whom we will name and control throughout the entire experience. We start from the lowest point like a slifer of the academy. We are just like another student, so we must comply with attending class, eating in the dining room of our bedroom and interacting with the other characters of the universe. These are just a few of the different activities that can be done on the island while you work as a student. You can visit the shop where you will spend the most of your time if you are looking to get better cards for your deck and improve your relationship with your partners. In the store you can buy snacks that are served as gifts for the people you want to give them to. Each character has different tastes so everyone will not like the same thing. This is important to know because it will be determining when you establish a good relationship with the one you want to be your partner in the Tag Force tournament. The Tag Force tournament starts in the second half of the game. And yes, the first part lasts about 80% of the game. The tournament would be a championship to play in pairs and determine the champions. In fact, this even gets a lot of mention and anticipation during the course of the first half. As you have noticed, all these immersive elements have the final objective of making the player feel like another character of this universe, give him his own role and works as he wants within the parameters of the academy, make friends, buy packs, play duels, attend to classes, among other little things. In the story, you can also buy packs just like you did in the corner store when you were a child. You can buy them with the points you earn in duels and tasks in the main story. They are divided into categories of monsters of different attributes, magic cards, trap cards and including packs dedicated entirely to cards from the deck of a particular duelist. But this will only be available when you establish a good relationship with each one of them. An excellent way to expand the useful content of the game throughout its characters and a fun way to find new cards. If you get a a good relationship with some partner you may receive emails from them and so know if you are doing a good job to turn them into your dual partner. Here I would like to make a parenthesis because the game has a big failure and it is a factor that could dangerously take it away from being one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh games from my perspective. Yes, it is that serious. But don't worry because even though it seems impossible the game manages to compensate this mistake. Unfortunately when you reach the day of the Tag Force tournament and you do not meet the requirements to have a dual partner, the game will say, oh, unfortunately you don't have a partner, try again next time and this time make sure to get a partner. After having passed through so many classes, buying snacks, packs, passing exams, playing duels for more than 80 days, they send all your progress to the garbage and tell you, oh, you're bad, try again. We're not talking about a boss fight or something like that, they return you to the last checkpoint and that's it. No, they return you to the start of the game and send your 20 hours of gameplay to the drain. It's just a terrible decision on the part of the creative team, plus they don't even really explain how to get a partner, but do not spread panic. Regarding the gameplay section and the formats that the duels must have, it is simply splendid, but we will get there. The PDA, which is the personal navigation system that all students have, has many functions. You can see the calendar, check your duel history, see your email, edit your deck and also manage your items. In your room, you can do even more things with the database. You have an album of cards that shows you the total of all the existing cards you have on those you need to complete the collection. You have many hours of game ahead. You have a list of forbidden cards as well. Despite appearing to be an original story set in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX universe, this story mode realizes the real events of the first season of GX with the story of the brother of Alexis and the writers of the shadows. All these events are distributed progressively on a specific date 
dates of the calendar to always keep them in mind. In this way, our immersion as a player is combined not only to the academy but to the canon events. Sometimes, in the explanations of the rules in classes, they can be very redundant, but I understand that this is because there may be new people to the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe who were testing the game. Now, yes, talking more in depth about the duels, let's see what makes them a really enjoyable experience. Each duel can be one against one or two against two, with a partner. You decide who starts with rock, paper, scissors, and then the duel works the same way you saw on TV when you were a child. The ultimate objective is to end the opponent's life points. All this is developed in a simple but unique representation of the dueling board, with music according to the situations of each confrontation. An easy and quick system to learn and surprisingly satisfactory. This game mode comes accompanied by in-game animations with the not very loud graphic quality of the PSP, but in any way it traces very well the identity of each character with their phrases, not so much with their expressions or body language, since everyone has the same one. Beyond that, the sensation of seeing how a card is invoked and the attack and defense points appear next to it, as in the series, was great. The value of this title is due to the good implementation of its physical immersion. This happens when you your actions in real life represent actions within the game. An example of this can be seen more popularly in games like Five Nights at Freddy's, the way in which we interact with the elements on the island and our companions, as well as the progressive customization of the cars, gives rise to a feeling that had not been achieved in Yu-Gi-Oh games, at least from my point of view, in these years. It was always an arcade game duel after duel after duel, without any narrative or mechanical value, but here that changes completely. Also, I note that to many this format will sound familiar if they ever play the Pokemon titles, and it is valid to say that the formula of the Pokemon games is represented here, in a different way, but it does. Thanks to this concept of game, awakens in us, in an almost imperceptible way, the thought of collectors, the thought of discovery. The game only gives you a brief introduction to how the mechanics, coexistence, and a few rules of dueling will work from there on. Everything you advance, it will be on your account. It is up to you to establish a good relationship with someone to get a partner in the tournament, it's up to you to improve your deck for dueling, it's up to you to explore new places and find new NPCs or different items. That is the essence of this game. The Dueling Academy, if you look carefully, is very faithfully represented. You can even go to places like the abandoned bedroom. The feeling of getting the cards, even the old ones of the first generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! in back shops, is simply very satisfactory. In the duels, there are not only the animations of the actions of the duelists, there is also a very limited number of iconic monsters that have a special animation when they are summoned and attack, like the Machines of Cyrus, the Janma, and the elemental heroes which I love. And if you were wondering, yes, my partner is Jaden in the tournament, and I am a super fan of the elemental heroes. After a certain point, the classes begin to become generic in their actions of semi-secondary characters. Now, when there is nothing more in depth to explain about Murning and well, it lets us see funny faces of some characters on certain occasions. Teachers encourage you to study the rules of dueling your partners talk with you, have duels together, and the academy schedule makes you follow the rules until you reach a certain incurable point in the story. But you, yourself, in essence, are the one who makes your own way, and that has so much more personalization and decision-making than any AAA game with great ambitions that someone may want to sell you as a unique experience where your decisions change the curse of the story. The aspect of replayability is wide, in part also thanks to the average duels can last between 7 and up to 23 minutes. A very interesting addition and that I find fascinating at the same time are the passwords. At a certain point you find a lab on the island that has machines which receive card codes. These codes before were a little harder to find but with the accessibility that now exists on the internet you can find a lot of passwords in seconds. This is how a card is generated with that code and you can use it as a rent in next duels. It is something that I find very very creative as a gift for the most passionate fans. My point is that Tech Force is and always will be an escape for the most faithful fans to the franchise to experience what we wanted so much when seeing those epic duels in the TV. In the same way that the Pokemon Go phenomenon made us all back to be kids going in search for our favorite creatures, no matter how stupid we looked. Tech Force transmits that same feeling to me in a little less direct way, but it does it. Think that no other title in the 
franchise has achieved. What made Tech Force great is what many did not dare to admit. But if you may do it, leave me in the comments what you think about the game, guys. It will be a pleasure to read your opinions. Thank you so much for watching, that was all for today, and I'll be watching you in the next video. Take care and see ya.